This is Notes on a Scene. My name is Christina Graff. And I'm Paul Graff, and we led the visual effects team of Stranger Things Season 2. You remember me? Right. Will you let us pass? And in the climax of chapter nine, there's like three storylines that converge and they're all visual effects storylines. The section that we'll cover is primarily underground. There's interconnected passageways and in these tunnels, d the demodogs are living. Okay, so here, here we're in this four chamber. It's like a big circular place. And Will just ran into Dart and that's Dart here on the side. And actually on the day, we had just a plastic head on a broomstick and I was operating the plastic head. So we have an eye line here. They have something to look at. Uh, Dustin pulls out his nougat and his love for this animal is paying off and saves everybody's life. The demodogs, they have five different stages. The first stage is about the size of a large tadpole. The second is about the size of a nice frog or toad. And the third is about the size of a cat. And the fourth is about the size of a dog. We're going like from cute here, and then we go like right here, we go to scary. The thing is, it's kind of difficult to be cute with these animals because they, if anybody has ever noticed, they don't have eyes. And we still like they have to convey their emotions and reactions just with body language. And so that was really important to the Duffers and to us. If you go to chapter three and chapter four, there's like a whole evolution of this little cute dart animal and we kind of don't want to give away right away that it's a, a demogorgon and uh, of course the thing where you would see that is when the mouth opens so it doesn't have a petal mouth until it gets to stage three and stage three is when he eats the cat because we have to communicate this to the kids so they they know what they're, what they're actually looking like. Dustin was really excited about it. Um, like how these creatures look and how they move. So everybody knew, oh, they're gonna be really cute and they're gonna look really good. But uh, on the day, we don't have those. So I figured, why don't we just uh, 3D print those? First of all, it was like something tactile. They could actually see what the weight of a Demogorgon would be in their hands. What we did is we took always one of our, our, our puppets into the first take. And then eventually we'd, we'd take everything out and say, we just play just completely without, unless it's something that's with they're really handling it and it being interactive, like Gaten with uh, putting the polywalk under his head. There's these snowy particles that you always find in the upside down, and they're called spores because they, we think that they're like seeding like the upside down world and the upside down plants. You don't just get to put like some random things in here and just not have them art directed. I can say like pretty much every shot spores have been treated with a lot of love to like the way they are moving to the depths of field, like they need to sit right in the shot. And then there is like sometimes there's ones that just curl right by the lens, but they never, tr they never want to be too much in your face or too little. Like it's just a sort of like a balance that has to be found. And so I can say I'm very proud of the spores of season two. Uh, they react to flashlights. There's like all kinds of funky stuff that's going on with these spores. They are ge randomly generated. So you'll have some spores that be misbehave and do something stupid, like th they spin really fast or they run just right over the nose of somebody when it's an emotional moment and they're like 99% CG. What happens is there's basically um, a cutout, it's called rotoscope, and you, you'll have to rotoscope each object or creature that's in the foreground, and lots of times you'll have to do things in the background too to create depth, so that you can add spores in 3D space and Z space yeah. throughout the scene. And you'll add atmosphere. And they can, like flow around. You know, they do like funky stuff, and they re they re react. They're they're not just like a sort of a snow pass that's overlaid of everything. They're actually in 3D space, and when the camera racks, it racks in the sp spore space. The tunnels were designed as kind of like a crossbreed between you know, production design and visual effects. You can't really move a camera inside of these tunnels because they have all of these ridges and rifts and you can hardly walk in them, but you can definitely not do a dolly shot or something. So as they turn around, the dogs come around the corner, they're looking at the dogs and then they turn around as the dogs run towards camera. There was no tunnel. There was just like basically the a tunnel ring. behind them and then we just like filled in the rest like of the tunnel in the in foreground. A, this was the end. So, you know, and yeah, and then the there were like little, little lights. Extends out. 
around it so we can track it and we know where, where the edge is and then we basically do a digital, digital tunnel extension on top of it. This is uh, the climax, basically the climax of the uh, entire season two. While the visual effects in Stranger Things are not really the main attraction, we could do a bad job and really hurt um, the show, you know. And uh, what ha we have here is we have this kind of shark cage elevator that they're going down in this place that's called the Rift Chamber. And that's actually the only set that doesn't exist. This yellow outline is, is the only practical thing on that set, plus obviously the Yeah, actors. so it's basically an empty room. And then inside of this empty room, you have like three blue screens, big panels with wheels at the bottom. So you can r r run them around. There's another one here. And uh, then we have some light sources. It's red and, ye and yellow, so let's use, use yellow. So okay. basically then we have like light, light <laughs> hitting them from different places in different intensities. And wind, we would have some propellers, right? And that's really it. That's it. That's all we had. This skin is what we call the rift membrane. We have a couple of things that are flying around, and then you have all of the wind and the atmosphere, and how does that interact with each other? And then behind this, you have the shadow man, which again is like its own entity, but they all have to speak to each other. It all has to sit in the same scene. The cage needed to shake a lot if once those demodogs were jumping on top of the cage. You know, there needed to be some sort of instability like, underneath it because it's something heavy has just landed. Yeah, we thought maybe we'll have somebody jump on the roof of the cage, but uh, first that he wasn't too excited about it. <laughs> And, uh, and so instead we have, uh, we had somebody below the cage just rattling as, as the, because it's a box, so it doesn't matter where it comes from. So we had like somebody stand below the cage and jerk it real hard when the, when the dog lands. When Eleven kills the Demogorgon at the very end of uh, season one, he kind of turns into this cloud of ashy particles. And so at the very beginning, when we were talking about the Shadow Monster, we were like, what if it's made out of these kind of ashy particles? Wait, maybe we just take that theme and just like develop it into the next round. And like, what do we have that's kind of like our ashy particles and electric and big and black? And we have tornadoes and we have like big storms and volcanic eruptions. And like, that's what was kind of like the source material for this monster. So what you have here is shadow monster comes out swirling. It's a particle system, so it's it's basically a, just a bunch of particles swirling around. She basically builds a shield, and this, it just spreads everything out sideways. She just pushes back, and while she's hitting this, she's already airborne and floating, and she's actually hanging off of a, a wire rig. She's not connected with the cage. Well, you can see that her eyes are looking like a little odd. They're really black and really big, and so that's a, that's a digitally uh, done. And then there's veins forming, like here, all of these little guys forming under her skin and around her eyes. It was digital makeup, and basically you start with like putting just a bunch of dots around her face. So you know how it's moving and you can attach something to her face. Tracking marker. You, we, we had like different iterations of like really intense and less intense. And we wanted to, her obviously to still be 11, like a not like find a nice balance between her turning into being in a very extreme state and b turning into a monster. We didn't want her to look like a monster. So it was like a little bit, little bit of like dialing in, dialing forward and dialing back a little bit. And this is the result that we all felt really excited about.